Hey guys, I'm Tara with Tara Simon Studios, and today I'm going to be reacting to Morset, and she is singing Stone Cold. This is a live performance. Yay! Here we go. Let's listen. I just want to let you know, um, kind of highlight something subtle. I, I get on my singers, especially my female singers, I get on them all the time about this. When you're singing low, it's so easy to swallow your words and not finish the consonants at the end of your words. So, for instance, this could have easily turned into stone cold, stone cold. And I'm still saying the N and the D at the end of stone and cold, but you don't hear it because I'm not emphasizing it. And I need to emphasize it because it's a lower note and there's not as much breath being projected out and so therefore there's not as much volume being produced when I'm hitting that note. So two things need to happen in order to not feel like you're swallowing back the notes and for your audience not to, for it not to sound to them like you are. And that is, opening up your mouth and accentuating the vowel, and then also over-exaggerating the end consonant. So instead of stone cold, stone cold, my pitch was fine, I had vibrato, there's nothing really wrong with it, but out there to you, it kind of loses something and you don't even know why, versus stone cold, stone cold. And just that little extra effort of the n which is a semi-phonatable consonant, by the way, and you can sing through it. N, you can actually make a sound. D, you also can. Versus P, T, S, K, where those consonants are simply non-phonatable. You may not sing through them. You cannot. As soon as you add sound to it, it changes the consonant altogether. For instance, S, as soon as you add sound to it, becomes S, Z. So it's no longer even an S. It's a Z, right? But Ns and Ds are already semi-phonatable. So you can change from stone. Coal, which really sounds like sto coal to stone cold, stone cold. And it's much more um, even dynamic, even as it's low for the audience to listen to. And she does a really nice job of that. You, you hear each word and really without me saying this, you probably don't even appreciate all that's going on with those little low notes right there. But she sets her song up so beautifully at the beginning and then she does it again right here for that higher jump up. So then it's not actually stone cold when you go up top and you're like, oh, it's the word stone cold. Like you already know the words because she set it up nicely on the bottom. So let's, let's just listen to highlight that one more time. I I'm so much about the little things as a singer, you know. Um, there's, and we will get to this, but I gotta say one more thing. Um, I heard this awesome analogy once about um, the cathedrals in Europe. And for you guys watching in Europe, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You guys have access to these beautiful pieces of creativity at your fingertips. It's, I'm so jealous. But when I go over to Europe, the few times I've been, I always go to cathedrals because it's the ornate 
and and acute attention to detail that gets me every time. And it's not in the places that are obvious, right? I mean, of course, at the front entrance, you would expect it to be gorgeous, right? But in some of these Gothic cathedrals, you can look under a pew in the darkest corner and see the most beautiful, ornate piece of sculpture or this beautiful engraved carved thing in the in the corner where no one would look and it was because the art it was the artist knew right the artist saw it and it was so cool to me to see that and I always tell my students like hey like paint the cathedrals paint the cathedrals sing to the cathedrals because it's in the corners of the vocals that it matters it's in the little spots and this is exactly one of those corners of the cathedrals to me those lower notes that just don't matter, and yet when done right, matter so much more than you ever thought they would. And she does a beautiful job of that. Sorry, I digress. But let's listen back uh, one more time to that. Here we go. Listen to those endings. Just that little tiny D. Yeah. Beautiful. I think what she was going for is what I just did. The e. Um, let's let's listen one more time to that pitch there. I know I try to be. Yeah, yeah. She just so she just skipped the second note. He the note. She was a little flat on. And the thing about a run is, if you're flat on a note like one of them as you're going down, it's really hard to recover the rest of them. She kind of actually did. She ended correctly on pitch, but still, you heard this little. Um, this little disparity between the intervals of the first, second, and third note. She kind of got it back on the third note, but that second one was a little flat. Um, for most people, they wouldn't hear that. You, you, you're either trained as a coach, or you're a singer yourself, or you've, you're in the industry or producer or something to where you've noticed that. The general mass population would never notice that, okay? But just if, uh, if you're looking for detail, um, you want to, and I tell my students all the time, think of the second note in a run, actually, when you're riffing, because that's the most important note. It's not the top. It's that second note. If you can get that second note and simply fall off of it, the rest of the notes will be crisp and clean and on pitch. I don't know why. It's like some weird little magical trick I found, and it works. It works every time. So if you're trying to run at home, riff at home, he that second note is the most important out of all of them, no matter what type of pattern of riff or run you're doing, by the way. Let's listen one more time. God knows I try to be happy for you. Mm. This is just so perfectly placed right here. So forward, so bright. Her jaw is amazing. That little cry right before the note. I'm happy. I'm happy. Great transition between chest and head there. auto-tune that better. I mean, that was just it. <gasps> Good job. That, you know, 
Going and reviewing it. Okay, so um, lots and lots of, of technique to unpack in that. And I'm, so, I'm sorry if I, I got a little long-winded in the middle of it, but there was, there was a lot to say, and she excites me as a singer. Um, so she's got an interesting voice because it's very technically sound, um, and yet she's got a lot of soul and style at the same time. And she's really great at using her breath to create style. What I mean by that is um, she'll, she'll uh, withhold breath really quick at the beginning to create that and then let it go to elevate the note and to actually then sing and it creates this almost like this soulful R&B style which you don't expect by the looks of her, right? Um, she's so beautiful. She's got such a big beautiful mouth too that she really does utilize. There's nothing worse than a singer who has a big beautiful mouth and they open their mouth like me. It's like what I would give for your mouth, give it to me now, I'll use it, you know? Um, but she, she makes great use of, um, of the anatomy that, that she's been given, and, and that's wonderful to see, it's nice. Um, she also is, um, is really, for the most part, very much on pitch, like to the point where when she's really on pitch, you can't tune it better. I mean, it, it is, it's hard to remind myself that this is actually a live performance, except for those very few times where I mentioned that there was a slight, you know, a slight um, boo-boo in pitch, and it was mostly on the flat side. Which, by the way, is indicative of someone that's a soul singer. Um, it usually, I, I would say, as a stereotype, soul singers, R&B singers, they tend to be a little flatter because they, when they, when they slide up or when they do um, do emotive notes, uh, they tend to be under for emotional value and, and dynamic value, and so that's their bent. If they're going to be pitchy, that's usually what they air on instead of the sharp side. Classical singers can tend to air on the sharp side because of how much they engage their abs, how much air is coming out, the force that it takes to create that kind of sound. Um, but I, in my years of coaching, I, I would say that um, R&B, soul singers, blues, especially blues actually, because they really, they really ride the underneath part of the pitch for style. They tend to be flat if they're going to be pitchy at all. Um, and just a couple times she was, but man, when she is on, she is on. Like, if she were recording that in the studio and you put auto-tune or Melodyne on her voice, that dial would be right here. It wouldn't even go like this. It's just like, like as if it were off, you know? And that's so impressive. So for me, when I listen to someone like this and I have to remind myself that this is a live performance, you're doing pretty good. She's got a beautiful voice. I love reviewing her. Thank you so much for asking me to. Um, this was a great song. I love the song. I, I've heard it, I think, once before, um, but I don't remember who I heard sing it. This was a great rendition of it, though. I really, really enjoyed it. So if you're looking to sing, guys, there are three options for you that you can take advantage of um, by way of my studio. That is private lessons. There's a link below for that. There's also an eight-week course called Sing Smarter, Not Harder that I've developed. So many of you are choosing to opt into that course. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to Skylar. Skylar joined the course recently. He's a worship leader and his main goal was to be able to have more confidence singing better when he was singing alone instead of in a choir or with his small uh, group of tenors. And he said in the first week of doing the course that his range is expanded by a third, which is bonkers it's amazing and that he knows that his confidence level by the eight-week course is gonna go skyrocketing and so I'm so proud of you Skylar thank you so much for believing in the course I believe in you and I believe in you guys too don't sell yourself short if, if you want to sing if singing is something that's a burning desire it's a heart hobby for you or if it's something that you're even doing professionally don't wait 2019 is a year of new change new improvement and I encourage you whether it's through me or someone else Get about the business of accomplishing your dreams and your goals. You know, dreams are just goals without a deadline. So make it a goal and stop making it a dream. Um, so there's the eight week course, click on the link below for that. And now we're offering, because a lot of you have been asking, hey, like, you know, I, I get a lot of Instagram messages saying, hey, here's a clip of me singing. Um, can, you, can you review it? And I'm like, you know, um, and I'm gonna make that available. I'm gonna do that. So if you want me to do me or my coaches at the studio, we're, we're all gonna do it. If you want us to do a reaction video to you, um, to you personally singing, it can be a cover, it can be an original song, whatever you want. It can even be a cappella. It doesn't have to be with music or it can be, whatever. Um, click on the link below. There's gonna be an IG vocal coaching reaction review. I'm not sure how I'm gonna title it yet, but it's gonna be an Instagram vocal coaching reaction to you, not to someone that's famous. And click on that link go through the instructions and we will react to you. 
So thank you so much for watching, guys. This was awesome. I look forward to reacting to more and more set. Make sure you're commenting and subscribing as well because it's my favorite pastime before I go to bed to scroll through those comments and love and like and comment back. You guys have become a family of mine and I'm grateful for you. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.